Safeguarding co-determination. In Germany, employees have a right to co-determination because their voice is important in shaping a fair workplace, both through the Works Council and also in company decision-making in the supervisory board. According to law, in companies with more than 500 employees, employee representatives should make up one-third of the supervisory board. This is known as one-third participation. In larger companies with more than 2,000 employees, the workers are entitled to half the seats on the supervisory board. This is also known as parity-based co-determination. At least, that's the theory. In practice, however, things are often very different. Many companies dodge co-determination. Sometimes they just completely ignore it. And it isn't just a few black sheep. One third of all big companies with more than 2,000 employees in Germany have ducked out of co-determination. In some sectors, the figure is even higher. But how do companies manage to dodge co-determination rights? There are a number of ways. Let's look at four examples. First, they may use foreign legal forms, such as BV and Co.KG. These are not covered by co-determination legislation. The upshot is that there are no employee representatives on their supervisory boards. Second, the legal form of European Company, or SE, is a popular way of blocking co-determination. The number of employees is counted only once. Increases are not taken into account. This means that there's no co-determination at all, or at least not parity-based. Third, setting up a foundation at the head of a company. That may sound perfectly benevolent, but foundations aren't subject to the Co-Determination Act. As a result, the employees have no say in company decision-making. Last but not least, fourth are affiliates. The employees of affiliates are usually not counted when it comes to calculating one-third participation. Again, that means no workers' representatives in the supervisory board, even when the group has more than 2,000 employees in Germany. In other words, there are all kinds of tricks to thwart workers' right to co-determination, but it gets worse. Many companies simply ignore the laws on co-determination. They get away with such illegal behaviour because there are no effective sanctions. Many companies flout co-determination in this way. They include many well-known firms. Many famous brands breach co-determination rights using legal trickery. On top of that, flouting co-determination laws is particularly flagrant in such systemically important sectors as health and social care. And some big listed housing companies, such as Deutsche Wohnen, Vonovia and LEG are able to undermine their workers' co-determination rights. Until it went bankrupt, scandal-hit company Wirecard managed to avoid having both a works council and workers' representatives in the supervisory board. Meat processor Tonyes with over 10,000 employees evades any supervision by employee representatives. Indeed, co-determination seems to be rather the exception than the rule at large retail groups. This negative trend has been rising for years. Company co-determination is in a perilous state. If the loopholes were closed, there would be around a thousand companies with parity-based co-determination. To summarize, if the statutory right to co-determination is really going to apply, urgent changes are necessary. The Co-Determination Act must apply to all profit-oriented companies, regardless of legal form. Laws must also be formulated with more precision. And if workers' co-determination rights are flouted, sanctions are essential. Co-determination is a crucial right. It benefits not only employees, but companies too. But only if it's actually implemented.